Hello Grade 8 Science Learners! I am Sir Zipsy Corpus from Camp Pino National High School, your teacher presenter for Teleteroan. Even before people have started recorded earthquake events, no wonder scientists have been working very hard on how to predict when an earthquake occurs. We cannot stop this natural disaster from occurring. To predict when an earthquake will occur is always a question by many. Thus, for survival, you must learn about earthquakes. After going through this lesson, you are expected to differentiate the following epicenter of an earthquake from its focus, intensity of an earthquake from its magnitude, and active from inactive faults. Now that you know the relationship between faults and earthquakes, it is time to get to know the meaning of terms used when earthquakes are reported in the news. Is there an active fault identified in your town, province, or region? This is the surface fault ruptures during the 1990 Luzon earthquake along the Digdig segment of the Philippine Fault Zone. On July 16, 1990, a strong earthquake hit Luzon. Have you heard about it? Maybe not, because it happened before you were born. But if your parents are from Luzon, they surely know about the earthquakes. Is it possible that they were even affected by it? During that earthquake, many people lost their lives and many were injured. A lot of buildings and other structures were either damaged or destroyed. The earthquake had a magnitude of 7.8 and its epicenter was located in Nueva Ecija. According to scientists, the earthquake was caused by movement along the Philippine Fault. Another important question to ask is, how will you prepare to an event like earthquake? Where does an earthquake start? Earthquakes are vibrations or tremors produced within the Earth's outer layer or crust. An earthquake is tectonic. It occurs when parts of the Earth's crust break and also the rocks together with the fault slide near each other or far away from each other. This is often called faulting. An earthquake could also be volcanic. Tremors are often produced to signal an upcoming discharge at this vicinity or region. The pressure makes the rocks move. The place where the earthquake originates is called focus. The Earth's surface directly above the focus is called an epicenter. The seismic waves travel outward from the focus in all directions when energy is released. Scientists or experts during this field are called seismologists. There are two major scales during which earthquakes are measured. The magnitude of a particular earthquake does not vary from place to position. Magnitude is the entire energy released by an earthquake at its focus. Earthquakes of giant magnitude are stronger and typically more destructive than those of small magnitude. The Richter scale measures earthquake magnitude. The intensity of an earthquake is measured in terms of its geological effects and so the general damage it brings. Away from the epicenter, the intensity of an earthquake becomes weaker. The scale measures the intensity of shaking. In short, magnitude can be defined as the energy released by an earthquake at the focus. It is calculated from earthquakes recorded by an instrument called seismograph. While intensity is the strength of an earthquake perceived and felt by people in a certain locality, intensity is generally higher near the epicenter. An earthquake may be described in two ways, intensity and magnitude. The intensity of an earthquake gives us an idea of how strong or weak the shaking is. The Philippine Institute of Volcanology and Seismology 
or FIBOX, used the following scale to describe the intensity of earthquakes in the Philippines. However, consequences accompany any faults. Assume that a residence was constructed on a fault. As the spot displaces slowly, portions of the residence will be steered. The ground will have fracture, openings will not shut, and the roof may begin to drip. It is essential to perceive the spot or active faults as what you had observed in the recent illustrations and activities. Considerably, no significant constructions should be constructed near or on them. PVOX has a diagram that displays the active faults in the Philippines. An active fault is one that has moved in the past and is suspected to move again. Experts adapt various techniques to uncover out if a fault is active. One is by reviewing the country's past recordings. Archaeologists periodically record about disruptive events such as earthquakes. Another is by analyzing the oscillations former and today that come from faults. Active faults are structure along which we expect displacement to occur. By definition, since a shallow earthquake is a process that produces displacement across a fault, all shallow earthquakes occur on active faults. Inactive faults are structures that we can identify but which do not have earthquakes. Suppose an earthquake occurred in Mindanao. Would the intensity be the same all over the Philippines? The answer is no. It depends on the details of the distance and depth causing the earthquake. When an earthquake occurs, where would shaking be greater? Near the epicenter or away from the epicenter? Where would damage be more? Near the epicenter or away from the epicenter? The location inside the Earth's surface when an earthquake begins is called the focus or hypocenter. The point at the Earth's surface directly above the focus is called the epicenter. At the epicenter, the strongest shaking occurs during the earthquake. Let us try to answer the following question. And the correct answers to the questions are Earthquakes are a phenomenon in Japan, Indonesia, and therefore the Philippines. Why is that so? The answer is letter B because Japan, Indonesia, and also the Philippines are located within the Pacific Ring of Fire. What is the term that best describes intensity 7? The answer is letter D, destructive. Not every fault movement beneath the ocean will produce a tsunami. Which of the subsequent fault movements will lead to such an occurrence? Lastly, the answer is letter C, sideward movement. With that, I would like to leave you a quote from Quote Graham saying, being prepared for a disaster is like being prepared for any other important event in your life. And that's all for today. Thank you for your active participation. I hope that you learned a lot. This has been Sir Gypsy Corpus of Campina National High School. See you again next time. Goodbye!